Well, welcome to our conference, conference by the uh, Critical Psychotherapy Network and the Southern Association for Psychotherapy and Counseling on, on diversity and inclusion. Uh, the title came about, uh, first of all, uh, because I'm, my name's Del, Del Lowenthal and I, I'm chair of SACPAC and actually the Critical Psychotherapy Network. But I'm also editor of the European Journal of Psychotherapy and Counseling and we uh, started a project with United Kingdom Council for Psychotherapy where they, they suggested uh, an, a special issue of the European Journal on diversity and inclusion. And what then happened was I saw an advertisement for a post at a UK university um, saying they wanted a lecture on intersectional feminist, trans, critical race, whiteness, migration, inequality, queer, disability, post-colonial, decolonial approaches and studies. And so I thought that gave us a range, but I was also concerned that, you know, it's such a complex area. It's a very important area, but very complex. And how do, how do we look at this? We, and I found that people were, frightened to, to, to look at this area. In supervising people, I'd come across several cases where the, where the therapist had a client who was wanting a sex change. And yet the therapist hesitated saying anything. Was that appropriate or inappropriate? Um, another therapist was concerned about referring to a group of people as being black. Um, that somebody else was concerned that they had a client who had called for room service in a hotel and, uh, and then at night, when the waiter came in, sexually attacked and had sexual intercourse and that was scared to say anything in case it was appeared to be against feminism. Um, now these were all kind of complex areas, but there was the problem that, you know, are we becoming too frightened to, to think and to speak. So hence the idea of this conference where we could bring people together who were perhaps on the cutting edge of these developments and try and work out where we are as people and, 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 and as, as therapists. So as I said, we're, we're recording this and uh, uh, other than small groups, and we hope most of it will be available on our YouTube channel later. Um, the structure of of, of the day is that we have four or five speakers. We then have the respondents, and then we have a small, small groups. Um, I need to ask you, um, before we go any further, does anyone here have any access needs in taking part in this conference that we might make adjustments for? Um, please, please let us know now. All right. So we've got a wonderful array of speakers um, here, uh, here today. And the, the morning session is going to be chaired by Julia Kane, who hopefully is now co-host and can let people in who come in late as well as myself. And, uh, and the afternoon will be uh, chaired by, by Anel Brooks. So the two organizations briefly, SAFPAC, um, the Southern Association of Psychotherapy and Counselling. We're involved in training people in existential analytic psychotherapy and psychotherapeutic counselling, and more recently, uh, supervision. The Critical Psychotherapy Network came out of a book many years ago I edited, a conference at the Freud Museum, and has been meeting ever since. So the concern is that our inability to be clear ourselves on such topics as psychotherapy May, may threaten our, 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 very, our, our, our very project. Um, the, you know, we, the idea of therapy is, is, is that uh, people can come along and talk about what can't be talked about elsewhere. Um, that there's a concern that can they come and talk to us about issues with regard to diversity and inclusion? Um, are we able to hear and respond to that? And 
it, it, it's, we know we have these culture wars, uh, culture wars, culture wars, and hence the poster of the walls. And hopefully today is not just another brick in the, our wall, but can o o open, open it up. Um, so, no, but for some people to question how diversity and inclusion is conceptualized can be unacceptable as it questions their very right to exist. Yet for some others, the culture wars is just fiddling whilst Rome burns. It's a way of getting our minds off more important topics. Um, so when is it diversity and when is it perversity? And, and who decides? Who and what should be included and excluded? From what and by whom? When, when do such changes um, in what we might consider cultural practices become permanent? Or, or will they um, historically continue to bear? Well, what about um, what about how, how might we start to define some of these terms? Well, one way of looking at diversity and inclusion, and that's the we originally have seemed to define this, um, can be considered as part of a growing cultural trend of being concerned with the ways in which literature and other cultural media reinforce or undermine the economic, political, social, and psychological oppression of people. Now, this is quoted in a variety of different ways. So some of them end with people, some of the oppression of women, some end with the people of various genders. And so we'll find, I'm just going to give some one way of defining these terms, but in practice, with regard to diversity and inclusion, um, there's a lot of diversity in defining diversity inclusion and, and frequently what would appear to be exclusion. So for psychotherapists, psychological therapists, it appeared these notions increasingly are both important and yet difficult to be thought about with, with our clients and complex and take time. Furthermore, I suppose the question is the difficulties are they to do with the biases of us as, as people who are psychotherapists? Uh, could it also be to do with how diversity, inclusion and related terms appear to be constructed? Um, you know, the, the, these are all kinds of notions, important notions, which we weren't born into. So how then do we explore our changing world, which is so different? Us, are we no longer being curious for fear of being caught in tripwires? Do, do we need a trip advisor somewhere where we can confidentially explore uh, where we are as people and practitioners? So could, could I ask you to turn your mics off um, unless you want to speak, please feel free to speak. Um, in fact, It'd be helpful if different people could just read out these definitions, if that's um, just so we get a few more voices going. Um, so with regard to intersectional feminists, could somebody just mind reading out that definition? I'll do it, Dale. Thank you. Um, a prism for seeing the way in which various forms of inequality often operate together and exacerbate each other. Thank you very much. And this is from Kimberly Crenshaw, um, who I think originated this. And these are the kind of the kind of various forms um, that can operate together that can make the situation difficult. Another definition we had in our title was trans. Could this is from Stonewall? Could somebody read that out, please? I will tell um, someone else. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. You hear me? Um, trans is an umbrella term to describe people whose gender is not the same as, or does not sit comfortably with the sex they were assigned at birth. Trans people 
may describe themselves using one or more of a wide variety of terms, including but not limited to transgender, non-binary, or gender queer. Thank you. Somebody else on whiteness theory. Whiteness theory is a lens used in whiteness studies that identifies what white identity means in terms of social, political, racial, economic, culture, etc. Whiteness theory also looks at how whiteness is centric in society and culture and in creating a potential blindness to privileges associated with white identity that excludes and harms the racial other. Thank you, Richard. And somebody else on critical race theory? Um, I can jump in. Um, Thank you. Critical race theory. Uh, whiteness theory is an offshoot of critical race theory that sees race as a social construct. It posits that practice of whiteness are visible systems of whiteness that white people use to maintain power to benefit only white people. Um, critical whiteness theory positions whiteness as the default of American culture, and as a result of this default, majority of white people um, are allegedly blind to the advantages and disadvantages of being white due to the dominant cultural and, society and, and social processes created through the ongoing and historical performativity of whiteness. Thank you, Irene. Gender inequality? Mm, okay, men and northern women work less and occupy more of the, I'm afraid that the, the uh, I can't see the end of the page. There, the top the, jobs. Top jobs, okay, but women live longer, are better educated and get to retire younger. How best to harness the talents of both sexes for better something all round. Lives all round. This okay. is the OECD on the economics. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, queer, thank you, Paula. I'm happy to um, speak to this one, it feels relevant. Um, queer is an umbrella term for people who are not heterosexual or cisgender. Originally meaning strange or peculiar, queer came to be used pejoratively against those with same-sex desires or relationships in the late 19th century. Beginning in the late 1980s, queer activists such as the members of Queer Nation began to reclaim the word, the word as a deliberately provocative and politically radical alternative to the more assimilationist branches of the LGBT community. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Susan. Both, both reclaiming the word and the world, yeah? Um, cisgender uh, was mentioned there, so I hope it'd be useful just to have that. Could somebody read that, please? I can. Uh, cisgender, often shorted to cis, sometimes cissexual, is a term used to describe a person whose gender identity corresponds to their sex assigned at birth. Thank you, Peter. Disability? I can do this. Disability, long-term physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairments, which in interaction with various barriers may hinder a person's full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. That comes from United Nations. Thank you, Costantinus. Post-colonial. I can, I can do that. Thanks, Anna. So post-colonialism, post-colonialism is the critical academic study of the cultural, political, and economic legacy of colonialism and imperialism, focusing on the impact of human, impact of human control and exploitation of colonized people and their lands. More specifically, it is a critical theory analysis of the history, culture, literature, and discourse 
of usually European imperial power. Thank you, Emil. And now I think we've got the last one here. So who's been hesitating? I can do it. <clears throat> Thank Jessica or Gillian, whoever said. <laughs> Decolonial approaches, methods, and movements seek to disrupt colonial and settle, settler colonial logic and the seeming naturalness of racial capitalism. Thanks very much. So, I, these are obviously just um, uh, uh, initial definitions. There are people here who have, um, who have, uh, been studying these areas for, for a long time. Um, we have people with all kinds of different experiences, actually from all kinds of different, all different countries as well uh, attending today. So um, my hope, the hope I've got is that we can try and understand the perspectives of our speakers. Hmm? Um, I know that may get into whether we agree or not, but somehow or other really, enabling people to be heard and for us to hear them and move away from our from where from what we're at home with and gain from gain from the experience of being with them um, I we have we have um, uh, small groups twice today as I said we will have four or five speakers we'll have a respondent and then uh, we, we won't have a chance to be in small groups. And you may have your own questions, I'm sure, with regard to what to explore, but, but certainly for myself, um, I think there's a question of when am I appropriately curious? When am I inappropriately curious? When am I too afraid to think? Well, this is, this is our program. Um, have people got any, any uh, questions about today? I haven't got a question, Del, but I, I don't know if I missed it right at the beginning, um, but I don't know if everybody knows that on Zoom, we've got the choice to look at everybody or the slides and kind of to toggle between the two and make one bigger than the other, just so that we kind of know we can see each other if we prefer rather than a big slide in front of our monitor. Thanks, thanks very much, Julian. Um, thank you for that. Um, anything else people want to, to say before we, before we get started? Well, we have started, hopefully. Um, will, okay. your slides, will, your slides, will your slides be available? Um, Yes, I, I, they, could, they could be, yes. And anyone else who wants to, to distribute them, we could send afterwards. Thank you for that, I hadn't thought of that. Um, all right, so let's, so could I hand over please to uh, the chair for this morning, Julia Kane, who will take us th through this morning's proceedings. <laughs>